How you doing there? G'day, g'day, g'day. Welcome back to our show. We're here again today. Me and Special Ed. Ed is Special Ed and me. Hello, everyone. Nice to be back. How's everybody? Did you all have a good day? Anybody get washed away in that rainstorm? How many floods do you think happened in, uh, in the GTA? Well, I heard about those two guys who just about got uh, well, an elevator. Well, in the elevator, and they, the, 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 the thing on the news said that they were standing on, the, usually there's handrails in an elevator. Uh -huh. They were somehow on each corner, st I, I, I guess, and they had their, you know, their nose up at the... And they almost got filled up with water in the elevator. Well, and then I hear another story where some, some of the elevators in some of these taller condo buildings are going to be out for days. Well, my ceiling caved in this morning. Really? From water damage, yeah. Wowee. Zowie. My house is built in 1875, though, so... You know what? Not a tremendous surprise there. You know, you know what? The, the new restaurant at the National Club is called... I'm going to give you the name, and you tell me why it's called that. Okay. It's called 1874. Oh, come on. Now that's cheap. Uh, really? I'm, I'm, look at it. I know it's like, a difficult question. I'm, okay, just take a wild guess. Take something. Why <laughs> would they... It was built in 1874. Well, that building wasn't. Whoa, soft. That was the beginning of the National Club in Toronto, 1874. Oh, the, well, that's what I meant. The National yeah, Club yeah, was founded yeah, no. in 1874. Well, that's pretty good, James. I got, I'm impressed with your... <laughs> Deductive skills. Well, you're you you just on. you have a what kind of what, what else would that be? Okay, let me throw something else out there All for right. you. Okay. All right. Okay. So nail it on me. What's green and smells like red paint? What's green and smells like red paint? Yeah. Green paint. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Look, I win it again. You want to go? You want to? Do you want to double up? You want to go for more? <laughs> Is there money but on if this? If you lose, wait. You, we get it all back. Okay, but so can you're we up, put you're money up, on this or yeah, something? You're up a dollar right now. I'm up a dollar. Yeah. All right. You want to go, go for two? Yeah. Okay. It's got to be the same line of questioning, though. Easy as Why hell. is general, generally speaking, is plain, is food on a, on a plane that you get served not that good? Airline food. Airline food. Thank you. See? And food on a train is usually pretty good. Why is airline food not that good? Because food doesn't like to fly. Nope. What do you mean, no? Because it's plain. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, all right. Okay, one more, one more. What did the female deer say to the male deer as they are about to lie down and go to sleep for the night? Good night, deer. <laughs> Okay. I'm just okay. saying. That's a I, good one, Ed. I, and I made that up. Well, that's, not just now, though. I'm just shocked about that. Oh, I've got stuff in the in the. You got stuff in the, in the, in the hopper in the closet. Well, I'd like in to the say, closet. In, I don't want to say closet. Don't go in the closet, Ed. You Get out know, of the closet. You never know who you're going to find in the closet. Creepers, creepers, closet games. Clo closet, closet phobia. Um, let's look at our cannabis charts. Let's kick it right off with a look at the cannabis charts. Yeah. Oh. I got a new, I got a new, I got a new, uh, their client of the media production division. They're called Backstage Play. We're going to talk to the CEO. Scott White is here today. Very interesting story. Gamification of celebrities and their audience. You wouldn't believe how this thing sounds like it's going to make a ton of money. Anyways, we're going to talk to Scott. We okay. have. Is this a public company? It's publicly traded. It's publicly traded, and we also have uh, we have uh, Barry Fishman here from Vivo Cannabis, which was formerly known as Abcan, but he's just completely whoop, turned it around, and, yeah. and now it's Vivo Cannabis. It's got all these new brands associated with it. We're going to talk to him, and uh, what else? I think. If that's you, if, is there any? Uh, have you had any new experiences lately that you want to talk about? Well, funny you should mention what. I received in the mail a 30... Unsolicited? Un, no, solicited. I oh, solicited okay. it. So, yeah, okay. I said, right, uh, right. from CBD Therapeutics, I ordered a 30 milliliter little vial of 1,000 milligram CBD in MCT oil. You know what MCT oil is? Medium chain triglycerides. It's not relevant. Means it's just that to me. cannabinoids dissolve easily in it and it's easy to ingest. Anyways. So how much did you try some of this? Product? I did one, one dropper full, which turned out to be 33 milligrams of P 
pure CBD. So one drop, and how much? How many drops did you get into your container? What, well, what, there's uh, there's there's 33 milliliters per dropper full, per eyedropper full, which forms the lid of the thing. Okay. There's a thousand milligrams in 30 milliliters. That's the 33 millimeters per dropper full. Each dropper full being, call it. I should six have paid milliliters. better. Uh, Anyways, Attention here's what happened. Metrics. I gave a dropper full to me, a dropper full to Alan, and a dropper full to the dog. And two hours later, we are tingling and glowing and giggling and energized and like having a great time. We and, actually and no, it's no psychotic. Uh, no, there was no high per se, but the the body was but, but energized. Up, up, super up. Had a brilliant sleep. We stayed up till one in the morning, giggling and laughing about this, that, and the other thing. We just had a great time. I learned. For instance, when your roof caved in. Well, did, that was did, this did morning. You, did you laugh about that? I did, actually. <laughs> I mean, and here it is the next day. I see a picture of that. I'm like, oh, look, the roof is caved in from all that rain. Maybe that's because uh, you don't own that building. Well, it's rented. <laughs> More reason to Not laugh. Not my problem. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You know, but. Uh, yeah, so you thought this was a killer. Uh, Killer product. Well, this was this is revolutionary. So what I've realized is that at this point in my life, the most attractive experience of ingesting cannabis is not the THC component; it's the CBD component. And I would suggest to anybody out there no, who has would, found would themselves, would you say that was sort of an epiphanous moment? It was epiphanous. It was epiphanous. Wow. I mean, we're talking thirty years of cannabis use here, and I'm just finding out, like, wow. It's the CBD I like, not the THC. Well, the, C, the CBD D does make you feel a little energized, right? Dude, I'm telling you, the yeah. CBD yeah. is is where it's at. If you what, have, tell me what tell the audience again, what does CBD stand for? Cannabidiol. Cannabidiol. Yeah. Well, the, the cannabinoids. So there are 144 identified cannabinoids within the CBD complex. So the CBD complex is the non psychotropic component of cannabis that nonetheless is the ingredient that interacts yeah. with the endocannabinoid system which is in every living thing. And so every cell in our body has an A and B cannabinoid receptor receptor on it. Receptor. And, the, and the cannabinoids, yes. the CBD complex part of the plant, not the THC part of the plant, yes. reacts with these CBD receptors and has what medical research is turning out to demonstrate as a homeostatic effect on the human body. In other words, anything that's out of whack, blood sugar levels, nervous system, it puts it back into normal, homeostatic. That's what that means. I, 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 I'm interested in this because I know, uh, uh, for instance, if you're diabetic, mm -hmm. your, your blood sugar is bouncing around like crazy. I'm not trying to say okay, that okay, this okay, is a cure okay. for your blood sugar diabetes, no, 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 which no, I'm is- No, sure, right. It's, it's, that's a different program. Yeah. But the thing is, if you have tried cannabis yeah. and you find you don't like the sensation of getting high, I highly recommend that you try a pure CBD product and just sit back yeah. and enjoy it because it's no mental. Now, for instance, are you probably going to have some more of this tonight? Uh, you know, I wouldn't because uh, tonight's like it's Wednesday night. There's not a lot going on. I got a bunch of stuff to do. Um, I was surprised. 33 milligrams was like. Whoa! That's and and like, how many milligrams are in the bottle? A thousand. Thousand. So you got three times ten, thirty hits, basically. Three hundred. Three hundred. Three hundred times thirty-three milligrams would be a thousand. Three hundred and thirty-three times three hundred and thirty. No, something like that. Yeah, it would be nine hundred ninety-nine. Three, three and a hundred. Thirty-three goes into a hundred three times. Right. And oh yeah, you're right. Thirty doses. Thirty doses. That's like 30 a lot of milligrams. doses. No, well, it's a small bottle. It was 130 bucks, but I got to say, the product was outstanding. Killer. 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 Yeah. I could do it in the morning. Like if I was hungover, from now on, if I'm ever hungover and I've got to come in here and do this kind of stuff with you, right. I'm going to uh, big, big eyedropper yeah. full of CBD. If I... So you wouldn't put it with an eyedropper, you wouldn't put it in your eye. No, you put it under your tongue. You're supposed to hold it under your tongue for one minute and then swallow according to the directions. Yes. Because that way the... It's easier to, it's a faster hit to your bloodstream if you hold it under your tongue because these are very absorbent cells in the bottom of your mouth underneath your tongue. Right. And so if you hold it there for a minute and then swallow, okay. you're going to get a right. much more faster onset. And typically you would probably get a much sooner offset. 
Right, 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 right. Okay. Anyway, so so okay, so the, the, can, the I guess that's the new the new product that we would normally talk at the end of the 420. show. Four twenty. We're talking about it now because three, now we're three, so like three energized. Ten. Yeah. Three ten. CBD Therapeutics is the website. You order this. What stuff. company has this? CBD Therapeutics is the website. Is there an echo in here? <laughs> and the I ordered it on July thirty first. It got here yesterday. So like a week. A week. And uh, okay. And you don't need a prescription for this stuff. It's legal. Now, and I'll tell you, you will enjoy the hell out of yourself. You'll have yeah. a fantastic evening. Not that it gets you high, but you feel like you're sure. energized and tingly and sure. sparkling and everything's like, wow, it's just fantastic. Uh, I loved it. Anyway, back to uh, the, the marijuana space today. I noticed that uh, Canopy was up a whopping 5%, not 0.5%. 5%? Well, 5%. let's start with the uh, cannabis index here, the big cap index. And uh, yeah, four point. Whoa! Oh, geez, Did you son. see that? I was just, Holy cow! Are you okay, Ed? I'm afraid. Did he, he, I'm very afraid. I just missed me. Holy smoky! Holy Jesus! Anyways, Holy smoky here. Yeah, the whole index is up one point six percent. Okay, we got, we got one one T God down. T God. T God. That hit eight and change recently when they came out about a month ago. Yeah, it got up there, yep. And now here it is at five fifty. So quite a re uh, retrenchment there. Yeah, what's well, had a couple of. Uh, couple of issues, shall we say. Issues. Yeah, like uh, being refused a construction permit for their site in Hamilton and then going ahead and trying to build it anyways. That's like, that's got to be one of the most all-time like, what? Like, who would do that? You well, don't get the permit. So the that... city actually sent workers to sit there on site and make sure nobody starts again because they're like, well, these guys are like, they're just ignoring the rules here. So look at, look at Oxley here. Oxley. Oxley. 78 cents. What was the volume on Oxley? Let's take a quick look here. Yeah, that 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 thing is, uh, you know, I, I made it. Look, I, like, well, I want to. Going wait a minute, But a sort of 11, 12 days, it goes from where it is now yeah. to, the, uh, the, to, the, to its zenith. Yeah. And then it spends, what are that, is that a month? No, that's three months. No, that's five January, months. February. Okay, seven months. That's January to now. So seven and a half, eight months. Seven months. The end of August, it would be eight months. Yeah, so seven months. Seven months, it, it, it distributes this wealth. Yeah. So that's the, you know, if you think about it, you, the money's made rather quickly and then distributed over time. That's one way to look at it, I suppose. Accumulation here. Dis wow. Distribution. I don't know. If you knew I just, the story of that stock, you know, this is not a traditional stock, and this did not come to market in a traditional way. Okay. And there are okay. all kinds of interesting features of this stock that we just cannot talk about I hear you. without getting ourselves in into trouble. deep caca doo doo. Yeah, that's So not, we're just going to ignore that. that. Let's but, just but say that at, since at, Chuck Rafici took it over, they've, they've been moving it towards a, you know, a bit of more of a traditional business model, right? And uh, and a traditional public company yeah. sort of. But uh, I mean, I mean, this thing trades uh, probably uh, here almost a million shares. Yeah, no change in well, price. Well, was a monster trader back in January. Yeah, yeah. And and let's put up weed. Let's put up. Uh, you want to see what the weed is I, doing? I do but because I, I'm looking. I'm looking to see whether, you know, I think there's a, a some article today, that said that uh, cannabis stocks are heading. Uh, look at this. Now, you know, the, the one thing I will tell you is that, you know, you, when these things, this thing was coming down looking really weak, and all of a sudden, you know, starting to move a bit higher. Yeah, okay, but look at this. Look at, so it's up 4.6%. We look over at Aurora, and Aurora's up, well, that's just a few minutes ago, so let's refresh that. That's, that's a, and Aurora's up 0.65%. Yeah. So it has the same sort of pattern down here yeah but it, it's it's uh, uh, from a from the, from the high of fifteen dollars to where it is now it's trading at say let's say six on fifteen is three forty forty percent six on fifteen is about forty percent yeah well you know here's, here's yeah it's it's Big volume, 15 million what shares. What people often don't understand about Aurora is that Aurora has used its equity in the form of its public company currency, which is not really equity, but it is used as equity right. to acquire future cash flows in right. the form of med relief and canned 
Canicure. Right. It's, it's, it's canicure. used. Canicure. It's used. It's Canamed. It, 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 it's used as shares as a currency. Yeah. So there's a billion shares out of this, and there's 200 million shares of Canopy. You divide Canopy by five. What do you get? Seven bucks. So does Canopy have the same range of future revenue streams that Aurora has bought with its stock, which when it shows up on the balance sheet in Qs 1 and 2 in 2019 yeah. is going to represent, now they're going to trade on a multiple of the revenue and the earnings per share, arguably. Right. You know, but, that's, that's, but I, that's the I'm, thing. I'm, a con I'm concerned that if it ever got below this, this $5 level, if it got below there, you know, you, the technical analysis would suggest it would th then try to find that level of support, which is two and a half dollars. So, you know, it, it, is this going to get cut in half? Well, I mean, not, you, you uh, know what? I mean, I don't want to. I, I, I don't know. It just looks. They got they issued 5.35 shares of Aurora per Med Relief share. Med Relief was trading close to twenty-five dollars when they did that. So the implied premium was thirty dollars a share. So if the right the Med Relief guys got thirty bucks a share in the form of five Aurora shares per Med Relief share, right? Then the implied price they got five shares. They got five point three five five point five three five. Hold on here. Let me see. It's down here in the news flow. Let's have a quick look. Uh, da 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 da. Republic of Malta, new reimburses, dividend of TGOD, acquisition of approved acquisition. So, this is where we'll find that mentioned. Australis. Now, it doesn't actually talk about the uh, reduction of capital resolution. Okay, so that's not where it is. Oh. Let's go for So if, five, if they got 5.35 times 6 and change, 6 times 5, five, five is 30. Yeah, well, that's my point. It's is 32 that it could go to it's five like 32 bucks. bucks. Yeah, well, it could go to 5 bucks. It could go to 5. At 5 bucks, all the shareholders of Med Relief who had 30 bucks a share are breaking even. Okay. Arguably. Okay. At least. And the ones who are in cheaper are up that much more. Right, right. The problem is. You know, the management team at MedRelief really set the example and they all blew out their stock ahead of the amalgamation, which sort of caused a general stampede for the exits. Now, is it oversold at this point? It looks to be oversold. Technical indicators suggest yes. Yeah. Uh, fundamentally, is it oversold? I would say based it, on the future cash flows that uh, yes, it's oversold. So does that make it a buy? That is not for us to say because we're not chartered financial analysts. But well, I kind of think I have myself as one. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's fine. And you can think world. of yourself as Superman for yep. all you care. Yep. For all I care. Just but call as me long Clark. as you don't just start, call me Clark. Okay, Clark. You got to find a phone booth and make a change, do you? Yep. Anyways, uh, yeah. So, anyways, that's okay. that's the all story right. on Aurora. I think that uh, I think you're going to start to see it reaccumulate, especially as the you know, the, the cash flows from these things start to materialize on the balance sheet. So let's okay. look at okay. some, uh, let's look okay. at some other cannabis stocks here. Let's look at the small cap index is up a paltry 0.16%. Yeah. Uh, let's try to find out who the big winners are. I'd like are to know here. how many uh, cannabis companies are coming. Uh... FSD Pharma down 10% on the date of 13 cents. Huge, huge what? Huge wanker, huge loss, whoa, huge mistake, <laughs> whoops. Just huge. Just huge, oh my God, that is so huge, Ed. Anyways, a bombastic name deserves a bombastic performance, I suppose. Uh, Ianthus Capital Holdings down 4.29%, 691, after a solid few days of upness, I think. We'll call it upness, that's my word. Yes, you may use that. Let's take a look at their chart in the one month window. So again, one, two, three, four, five days up, up a total of 15%, 20%. Money's going to be taken off the table. You got your day traders in there. Isn't that right, Ed? Isn't that right? Yeah. Is there, is there a way we can look at, for Let's instance, who the gainers are here? Whoa. Tetro Biopharma up 14.3% today. That's a big move. Invictus is up 14 cents. That's a big move. Yeah. Look at that. 
Uh, wow. Yeah. You know, you know, and again, this doesn't always on work. On news? But, it is on news. Tetra Biopharmers Dr. Chamberlain to announce Health Canada's green light for the cannabis versus fentanyl trial. What? What do you mean cannabis versus fentanyl? There's no competition there. What the hell is, what new tomfoolery is this? Tomfoolery? Is that, is that one name or two? That's, well, that's like Tom Tetra Biopharma, a cannabis, cannabinoid-based drug discovery and development company, is pleased to announce that Health Canada has approved its protocol for a clinical trial investigating its PPP-001 drug as an alternative to the opioid fentanyl in the management of breakthrough cancer pain. Well, that's, uh, oh, okay, I see now. Dr. Guy Guy Chamberlain, interim CEO and chief scientific officer. Where, where is it? That's uh, Health Canada. Chamberlain. Chamberlain. <laughs> well, his name, first name is Guy, so I'm assuming he's French Canadian, in which case it may be Guy Chamberlain. What if it's Guy? Guy, well, it's Ch either going to be Guy Chamberlain, Chamberlain or Guy Chamberlain. Or Guy Chamberlain. We don't know. If Guy, if Guy, if you're watching, please pipe into the comments section. Let us know how to pronounce your name. We don't know. We don't know. Do you know? I don't know. Anyways, that's a pretty big move. Pretty big move there. Let's look at uh, Gene put out news today. They're up 10%. Gene. Gene. I saw the press release. I can't remember what it said. Let's take a quick look here. Did they Buck change 43. their symbol? Yes, they did. Wow. Okay, we didn't write an article. So they did a stock haul. Oh, they got a $25 million debt financing from ATB Financial. That's the Alberta Treasury branch, which is the provincial sort of backed credit union, to fund a 180,000 square foot expansion. I guess that is worth a couple of pennies on the stock price. Let's see, I wonder what the terms of that are. Let's have a look. Let's see if this is a good deal or a bad deal. Okay. 25.5 million debt financing, interest rate at prime plus two points. What's Canada prime right now? It's a two and a quarter, so like less than 5% interest. Wow, that's impressive. That is impressive. Oh, and they have a deal with Acreage Farms. Acreage Farms is the big US play that's in 15 states that's gonna come public here very soon. We had Matt Murphy in, we're gonna have him back. That's a really interesting story. Wow, good for Dan and crew. That's a that's a that's a winning deal. Oh look. Twenty five wow. Yeah. Looks like I got KISS involved. KISS? Yeah. Do you mean? see that? No. Where? Oh. Oh, Gene Simmons. Yeah. Have you met Gene? I've met Gene. Yeah, he's a character, isn't he? Yeah, that's uh yes, he's a character. He's a he's a real character. All right. Let's see what else is up in the small caps. Well, let's space. let's look at uh, let's look at six. Haiku Brands is up five point eight percent. ICC Labs is up five point eight percent. Well, every, everything up. on that page is up. Yeah, I, I just say it because it's all green. Okay, it's all green to me. It's all green. It's not that easy being green. Okay, let's go see what's happening on the venture index. The venture, the worst performing stock market for cannabis stocks in the last year is the venture index only returning 6.7 times capital since 2015. Uh, largest by market cap is still Oxley. What is their market cap today with the 78 cent price? Half still 400 million? 443 million. Whoa. That's still pretty respectable. Now let's see who lost the most. CO2 grow down 8.3%. That's interesting that they're down considering they've been releasing some good news lately with their CO2 dissolved in water product. Intelgenics Technologies down 6%. National Access Cannabis down 5.94%. I'm going to go to National Access Cannabis and sign up for a prescription before it's too late. Chiron down 2%, down to a dollar. Yeah. Harvest One, Namaste Technologies down to a dollar 37. So, lots of red in the uh, Canadian Venture Index, though there is some green. And finally, the best producing index for investors in the cannabis space in terms of a multiple return on capital since January 1st, 2015. The CSE, Canadian Index, companies trading on the CSE in the cannabis space, which is a lot of US plays. Look at that, look at this chart. Like of all of the 
uh, of all of the uh, index charts that we're following, this one has the best performance in terms of relative performance to to its high. To its high. And we mean high. So high. Wow. I like this. This. Cool. This. Look, is a whoa. Captor Capital down thirty-five percent. Which one? Captor Capital. Captor Capital, if I'm not mistaken, is a big. Let's see. I'm not going to say that until I know whether it's true. Let's go look at this page. Well, that's, that's a big drop. Oh yeah. Well, that's that's a third. Yeah. Let's take yeah. a look. That looks like uh, doesn't look like it has a lot of market cap left. Oh, they announced that they've resumed trading as a cannabis-focused investment company. Boy, that's original. California retail market captured through its wholly owned acquired California dispensary in Santa Cruz for $6.1 million in cash. Capitola Healing Association. Boy, this company sounds like it's going to have, uh, it's going to have marketing branding issues. John McPhail. John McPhail. That's not the John McPhail from... Uh, oh, I think so. From Union Securities? I believe it is. No kidding. Well, so he's back in the mix. Back in the mix. Oh, I see. These guys are invested in MedMen stores. Captor Investments. Maybe one. That's interesting. Gavin Davidson. Do you know Gavin? 705 area code? Sudbury? Sudbury, Thunder Bay. Thunder Bay! Kenora, <laughs> Chaplot. Uh, let's see what's happening with MedMen. I want to see what's going on with MedMen. I forgot we to We got Quint. Is this? Whoa. This is Roger Dent's company, Quinsum Capital, isn't it? Yeah. I Which just one? Saw, I just saw it on that, on that list. There it is. QCA, 25 cents. He bought back some stock. That's always a sign of desperation and, to me. And High Hampton Holdings is on there. Well. Just, 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 just hold your horses. Quinson Capital announces issuer bid. Quarterly dividend. Never buy back your stock. That's always a bad move. Unless, of course, you're Apple. 25 cents a share. Clearly, the buyback is not having the desired what's effect the, at this what's point. What's the dividend there? It's, there's a dividend. Bit. Oh, it's, it's not exactly... Uh, 0. 0.00125 cents. So eight shares gives you a penny? Yeah, see, I don't think you should pay a dividend unless it's <laughs> measurable in at least cents, not fractions of cents. That's just not going to get you anything but scorn. Scorn and... Uh, not, not to be confused with corn. Scorn. Well, What's, you, what is... Scorn and corn. And boy, you're really desperate today, aren't you, for like comic material. <laughs> like, I scorn think, and think, corn. Think, Come on, like, what's the... Scorn flakes. Would See, you, I would scorn, you have scorn at that flakes humor. for breakfast? No. Scorn flakes. But you'd have corn flakes. That would put you in a bad mood. What if you had a like a something growing on your toe? Would it be so like a? Would you call it a scorn or a corn? I'm growing on your toe. What are you talking about, Ed? Like, like scorn or corn? You know how you have you had corn on your feet? Corn? I don't have corn on my feet, <laughs> unless you walk through corn. Can corn or smashed corn? Cream corn. Cream corn. Have you ever bathed in cream corn? That's something else. Oh. I'll tell you, there's a, there's a wild Friday night if you find yourself in a giant vat of cream corn, especially with somebody who might, whom you might have some level of interest. Let's go say hello to our, uh, our adoring fans here. On uh, you, a, Whoa, no, we don't want to hear us talk. Giant vat of cream corn. Uh. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Hey, Brandon <laughs> Matthias says, buck off. <laughs> Michael Baran. Where did you say you got it from? Is Isodial. Isodial. CBD is legit. Isodial CBD is legit. We could talk about that. We're going to talk about Isodial on another day, Brandon. And the reason for that is because we're really impressed with how they pay themselves. And they're really impressed with how they take a $40 million top line and turn it into a $10 million. How do you do that? They, they, turn, they turn it into a $10 million loss? Well, I'm not going to pull up their financials. We're going to do a segment on okay. Isodial and All their right. financials soon. Uh, we were inviting them to the show. We gave them a chance. They declined our invitation to participate at this point. Really? Yes. Are they too busy traveling? No, I think they don't want to talk about their most recent financials. That reveals the $10 million your, payment to one of their relatives. Do you have the ability relatives. to call up the most actives on the venture? Uh, no. That's something we should look into. We should, we should look at the... 
Every time we do it, we should do three or four minutes on the most active list or the, or the biggest gainers, just to see if maybe we can identify something breaking a pattern early. Yeah, the problem with that is, what are you going to do? Draw the line at ten cents, twenty cents, fifty cents? You could... Well, look, look, we'll, we can we can draw the line wherever we want to draw it. Like I know for a for fact. For instance, if you had started to see ten to fifteen million shares on sick at at ten twelve cents, which happened, no, you, might, you might have said no. What happened was they announced the news, they halted the stock, they announced the news before the market. By the time you uh, could have placed a bid, it was already gone through twenty cents. What if you placed the bid? Oh well, yeah, but, but but at least you could have found it then. Let's take a look at that sick chart. Is it sick? It's sick. It makes me sick. As it was attended, intended. It's sick what this stock is doing. Actually, you know what I love about this stock is it's like the uh, the, the spread has evened out. It's trading at 41.5. It's sort of adopting an orderly today. market. Yeah. It's still got 12 holes at the lab, four of which are said to contain visible gold, according to one of the directors that I've uh, heard from. Full disclosure, I own a boatload of shares in this, so I will make money if this thing goes to a buck. I will make lots of money. What if it goes to a dime? If it goes to a dime, I will lose a lot of money. <laughs> but Do you, you see know what? Easy come, easy go. Easy go. Right. 13 million with, shares. 13 million shares traded, so lots of interest. Still a little accumulation going on. You know what's going to happen now because, so the, the big jump brought in the day traders. Now the day traders are sitting in these tiny spreads. The day traders are going to bugger off to something more volatile. And the accumulators, the real investors, yeah. who are going to ride this thing. I mean, if just think about it. 12 meters of 45 grams per ton gold. When was the last time we had a screaming intercept like that in the Canadian mining market. When was the last time, Ed? Well, the last time was it's further weeks back ago. than you can remember. Two obviously, weeks ago, two weeks ago. Two well, weeks ago. G no, that's what I'm talking about. GTT had Garibaldi. a discovery. Yeah. No, that was that's GT. There, there's there's two of them. There's Garibaldi and GTT. No. GTT is GT Gold Corp. Yeah. So did that one have a run? Let's well, take I, a quick I think look. It, I think it did. I think you got to go back. Uh, not exactly. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's go back. Uh, okay, yeah. Let's go back. Three year? Yeah. There you go. Well, okay. So no, what no, was no. that? A drill hole until September yeah. 2017? See, they pulled a hole. Look at the volume. Yeah. Big candle. Yeah. And, and closing at the highs. And then look at this. This is what? Can you tell me where that, what price we're at there? I think that was around 30 cents. That day was 39 cents. The oh. low was 36. No, no. This day. Yeah, that's that's actually where my mouse is right over. No, it doesn't. No, can't be. It is. With that range, that's more than a three cent range. That's what it's showing me here. Let's see what's the date? July seventeenth. Oh yeah, no, no. Th yeah, no, that's in July. That's no, 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 because the volume would have been close to a million shares that day. It was. Uh, 7.5 million. So, yeah, how do you know where? 8 million shares that day. Well, what? because you see the mouse here on my screen, that doesn't show up there because. Show, okay. See? That's the day. But, that, but this would suggest a volume. And this, that's the next day. It says 7.6 million shares. Oh, okay. So that's. So you, you know, yeah. See? Okay. okay. So that's the day. Look at this. Yeah, there Went we go. Went from 49 Low to 40, 92. That, okay. And 8 million. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. If we saw that. That if we were watching the most active list and saw that, we'd say, "What's going on here?" But yeah. you know, I, I'm telling you this okay. in, in retrospect. I'd like to July 25th, though. If we go back through their news, uh, previous, next, we're looking for July 25th. Next, oh, it only goes to next. The, the, the point. The okay, point. here we go. July 25th. See, this is what I'm saying. There's no opportunity there, Ed. They halt the stock at 8.54 a.m. They make the announcement at 8.30. You could have bought the stock in the 40s. Well, you could have bought it let's in say, the 40s. Let's say you bought it in the 50s. But I'm saying that if we would have looked at the high trade, like the big volumes yeah, right. at the end of the day, there's nothing there for us. There was no sign the day before it traded at No, no, but you could have bought it in 50 cents and it went to 250 in the morning. If you were awake and staring at this. No, thing. but if you, you couldn't be, if you didn't look at the most actives, 
you'd have to look at the most actors. I don't want to get in a fist fight, okay? <laughs> you know what? I'm no not going to have to cups. take you outside. No, but let's see, look. So July 24th, the day of the press release. This, this, eight million this shares. look at this volume. Right. That sticks out like a sore thumb. The day before? No, I don't care about the day. 183. So you're not going to see anything in but the let's high. Say, let's say we're doing a show at 3 o'clock, and, and we hit this thing. We'd say, hey, James, what the hell's going on over here? Look at the volume on this thing. Well, well so let's watch this. And so the, the, we can bring it to the viewer's attention, and then they would say. Well, that's what we did with uh, sick. Well, that's exactly. That's why I'm saying <laughs> I think six going higher. Yeah, no. So we're saying the same thing in effect. We are. But we're agreeing with each other. We're agreeing, well, we're agreeing with each other in a very yeah. untraditional fashion, where we're arguing with each other, but agreeing with each other. I think that's what makes us so much... Uh, Look at this. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. I, 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 uh, Up 9.3% on the day. So, so where there's smoke, there's fire. That's what I think by looking at that list. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say to you, uh, we're going to get the capability to uh, put this up uh, the most active list, so the biggest changers, and let, maybe, maybe we'll get. Oh, like, okay. Let's let's do that just for a let's for a riot today. But first, we're going to go to our YouTube friends okay. and see who's there because we have not acknowledged our YouTube loyal audience at this point. And so let's click to live streaming. Well, look at that. We're starting to get over a thousand subscribers per month now, Ed. On the on the channel really yep Ben Smith is here hey Ben love to have Ben around he's moderating for us Todd feather three five seven three point five seven shares of Aurora for one leaf oh it was only three three point seven five there you go I got it backwards so really Aurora should be ten bucks a share uh, modern Picasso says that I can treat us to happy hour at John and Sons when sick is at a dollar Modern Picasso, you got yourself a deal. Hey. I'll buy the oysters even. No, he's going to buy John and Sons and give it to you. <laughs> no, I'll buy the oysters. Uh, RSI is 82. Lawrence Daly says, I agree with Ed. There you go. I'm, I'm, hey, blo I'm, blocking, I'm blocking him now, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, really? You agree with Ed? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wouldn't do that. No, no, no. But, but look, there's different ways... I think looking at that list, like I knew, I knew a guy who was a, f a former broker. Did he get kicked in the head by a horse? He'd look at that active thing and he'd buy them. Like if he saw All big right. moves. All right, we're well, let's, go. let's let's okay. and we should do it for the Nasdaq as well because the Nasdaq often has a stock that's up like thirty percent a day. Some crazy. Okay. There is the most actives on the TSX. Laramid Resources. What's the symbol? L A M. Okay, and what's the let's let's look at the biggest percentage gainers. How about that? All right, I, I want to see the one biggest moment, per please. Percent gainers. There you go. Yeah, I asked you if you had this capability. You said no. Well, I don't personally. This is the TSX does. Oh, yeah. okay. This is okay. the TSX website. So if we go down here, post media, a buck fifty nine. What? Look at this, up seventy six percent. On, but volume ten thousand. Forget that. We have to have some. Uh, that is just too weird. Here, what? Here's some. Yeah, like, like there's nothing really here because the volumes are too late. This thing obviously trades by appointment. Yeah, this is the company that owns the Financial Post and the National Post. Wow. Yeah, but well, that, I don't. I, I'm just giving you a, a cursory view on this. Uh, a cursory look on this uh, list. I don't really see anything that catches my eye. Because I want to see volume. If there's no volume, well, here's something. TDG, Trinidad Drilling, up 11 cents on 704. Up 8%. That's not a bad move. Well, for me, I'd, you I'd always got to look at, uh, yeah, you got to see what the pattern is. Well, we got to see. If, is is that this anomalous in terms of volumes? Is, is that the first move? Charting. Actually, let, here's where I prefer to go. Price history. Look at this. Uh, so volumes, 704, 536, 4.7, 6.3 million. So it's trading, it's very frothy, it's super volatile right now. Down 15, down to, whoa, put this up, thing's in free fall. Okay, we'll put, a, put up a chart. Yeah, let's put up a chart. Well, Trinidad something, drilling. 
Oh, there we go. Wow, that's dropped from a buck eighty to a buck forty here. Dropped from two oh five. And today's the first bounce day. It looks like. Yeah. Okay. So, would you get in front of that? Got a buck forty. You, you know what? I, I not, not. I wouldn't. But but it looks like it's probably got it's probably got overdone to the. You know, they may come up with a quarterly results because it looks like it's a real. It's got a real company or, it's got. Uh, yeah. But, you want to see a real uh, a real funny one here? Yeah. Like check this out. This is this is great. Will I was looking at uh, Polaris infrastructure, and uh, like there's an ugly chart. It's bounced today because they just announced a 15 cent dividend, but they sold off from twenty dollars to twelve dollars down here, and the Globe and Mail was saying all the way along that it's oversold, it's oversold, it's oversold, it's oversold, it wasn't it's oversold, it's undersold because it's still selling off. Now it's returning. And, uh, you know, that's what I have anyway, to say Anyway, I, I, I detect there's some signage uh, flashing behind me here. Yes, we're going uh, to sit down with Barry Fishman now. Barry Fishman with Vivo Cannabis. Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest in this segment is none other than Barry Fishman. He's the CEO of Vivo Cannabis. If you don't recognize the name, there's a reason for that. The symbol is V-I-V-O on the TSX Venture. Barry, thanks for joining me again. <laughs> nice to be here. Okay, now, Vivo Cannabis is a new company, isn't it? Well, it's pretty new. <laughs> we just announced it last Friday. Well, that's uh, great. So let me tell you a little bit about the rationale for the change. Okay. Uh, we've had a very busy few months. We've uh, changed the team. We've uh, upgraded a lot of our grow technologies. Mm -hmm. We have uh, expanded Harvest Medicine, our medical clinic. We've rolled out new recreational and medical brands. And we thought it was time to revitalize the company and call it a different name. Abcan didn't mean anything. Vivo means living, it right. means alive, it's a very positive connotation. So we're excited for the future and we've renamed the company Abcan with a ticker symbol VIVO. I love the name. Thank I you. love the name because right away it does suggest and imply life and living and just something about two V's that close together is exciting. It, it's positive. <laughs> it's very positive. Yeah, okay. So tell me about some of the bigger changes that you made. Yeah, well, I don't know if you've kept track of the news. We first launched a new medical brand called Beacon Medical. Mm -hmm. I saw that. And the positioning behind Beacon Medical is a very professional brand. It's education focused. It's focused on helping patients navigate using cannabis. Mm -hmm. And we think that we're differentiating ourselves because we're very focused on medical along with adult use. Hmm. And over the last couple of weeks, we introduced two new adult use brands. The first one being Fireside, which is a social brand, being around a campfire, enjoying good times, and it has a great feel to it, great logo, mm -hmm. and uh, specifically targeted to gain customer loyalty in this emerging adult use uh, segment. And then just last week, we, re we introduced our second uh, recreational brand called Lumina. Hmm. Lumina is targeted on wellness, uh, relaxation, mind and body, mm -hmm. uh, making sure that people have an experience that, uh, that is positive for them. Hmm. So we now have three brands, Beacon Medical, uh, Fireside being our social brand, and Lumina being our wellness brand. So we've got nothing but great feedback from people. They love the names, they love the logos, yep. they love the package design. So uh, super uh, kudos go out to the, uh, to the Vivo Cannabis team for designing something that I think will really resonate with people. Yeah, I love the clarity between each of the sort of silos, the adult use recreational, adult use wellness. Now, is there a connotation that the Lumina brand has more of a CBD sort of complex associated with the product line? and? Uh, fireside more of a THC or is that just that's just my imagination at work yeah well I, I would say the first thing is we're not launching any uh, dry flower in our Luma new Lumina brand 
it will be exclusively oils, premium oils, lotions eventually, creams, essential oils, uh, products that would appeal to the health and wellness sector. Hmm. Uh, on our Fireside brand, we'll have a whole spectrum of new products that will cater to the social user. So they're very, very distinctly positioned. And we did a lot of research. We interviewed about 1,500 people mm -hmm. in various segments. And we determined really to split the entire cannabis sector in Canada into three distinct sec sectors, one being wellness, one being social, and one being medical. Mm -hmm. So very clearly differentiated, very clear positioning, and our marketing materials will reflect that as well. Okay. Now, you've, you've also made an acquisition. You acquired Canna Farms in BC. Yeah, we're very excited about that. Canna Farm is an outstanding group of people, privately held BC huh. organization, positive cash flow, wow. uh, so already great with the reputation base? on Facebook and social media, mm -hmm. one of the best uh, ratings of all LPs. Oh, okay. So we're very excited, hopefully by the end of the month, to welcome Canna Farms uh, into the Vivo cannabis family. So yeah. really excited about that. Wow, so Canna Farms already has its own patient trap line and distribution channels. Absolutely, yeah. Hmm. They actually triple our capacity, triple our patient count. Wow. Uh, and we're both expanding. Hmm. Uh, Canna Farms is expanding their cultivation facilities in Hope, British Columbia, and we're expanding our uh, cultivation facilities in Napanee, Ontario. Okay. Napani, all right, we'll have to come and visit with the film crew. Absolutely, anytime, you're always welcome. Napani in August is the best time to go, from yeah. what I understand. Now, it's had a really positive effect on the share price. I mean, in contrast to other uh, charts we're seeing in the cannabis sector, which are uniformly drifting lower, you've, uh, you've tacked on 50% in the last weeks. Yeah, there's nothing better than looking at the charts at the end of the day and noticing that your company is on the top of the list as far as uh, increases in that specific day. So we've had a couple of those. We're mm -hmm. very excited about it. Uh, we're also very excited at the end of the month to uh, integrate Canna Farms within the fold, and that will certainly take us to the next level. So right. very exciting times. The team at uh, both Vivo and Canna Farms are extremely excited about it. Mm -hmm. uh, we think our new brands uh, certainly provide us with a great ability to grow into the future, obtain customer loyalty, and make a mark for ourselves in this really super competitive industry. Sure. Okay, so apart from your medical mail order business, which is still restricted to mail order at this point. Uh, how will consumers access or, or get the Fireside and Lumina products? Yeah, well, we've publicly announced that we have an agreement with the Alberta government. Okay. Uh, so we'll be a supplier in mm -hmm. Alberta, along with, uh, we're in negotiations with a number of other provinces as well. So we do hope to have very wide distribution across Canada, and it's a starting point from us. As we expand capacity, we will ensure that there's demand to fill that extra capacity. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the year, we'll have about 12,000 kilos of capacity, quite a nice number. Uh, and by 2020, we expect to have 57,000 kilos of capacity combined Vivo and Canna Farms, which will make us a, a, a great niche competitor and uh, we're very excited about that. Not only in Canada, but we're also looking at great opportunities in Australia and Germany. Ah, I was just about to ask you about an international strategy. So yeah. you've, got, you've already got stuff going in Germany and Australia? Yeah, James, we have employees on the ground in both countries. Uh, we have a pain study that we're expecting to start in the next few weeks in Australia so that we will have kind of one patient at a time. It's a slow growth market, Australia, mm -hmm. but we believe it has a lot of potential. And then in Germany, we've selected a uh, contract sales organization to help us uh, sell our products. We're awaiting our distribution license anytime now, certainly by the end of the year. And we will participate in the next tender round to become a cultivator uh, for the German market. And mm. Germany is actually a stepping stone for the EU, sure. which is a huge market and a great opportunity for us. Yeah. So tell me, is the progress legislatively throughout the Eurozone, is it moving towards 
embracing a medical uh, cannabis strategy? Is it moving towards embracing both medical and recreational? Or what is, this, what is the status there and what's the progress? Yeah, so James, at this point in time, we really think that the EU is focused on medical cannabis. Germany's taking the lead, not too far behind our countries like Italy, Spain. Recently, the UK announced their intention to uh, enhance their market as well. But we believe that the best foothold for us is to establish a solid platform in Germany and then expand from there. Hmm. So okay. we're excited about that too. Yeah, no uh, doubt. Okay, great. Well, so then um, how's the, what's sort of the financial condition of the company at this point? How, do you have all the capital you're going to need to get to profitability? And when does profitability happen for you on the timeline? Well, we certainly over the last uh, six months or so built up a very healthy balance sheet. We have about 130 million. Once we acquire Canna Farms, we'll have about 110 million in cash. Hmm. Not all of that cash is allocated, partially allocated to our expansion plans as far as growing cultivation. Mm -hmm. uh, but we certainly have unallocated cash. We're looking for product development partners. We're looking for supply chain partners. We're looking for retail partners. So we've got a lot on the go. Uh, the team has never been busier, but also the team has never been more motivated to make a difference in this uh, really exciting uh, medical and recreational cannabis business. Well, great, Barry. What, uh, what are the main catalysts in, in 2019 that uh, investors can look forward to that are representative of you delivering on your business plan? I actually think the main catalyst will be execution. Mm -hmm. We have a great plan. We have a solid vision. We know where we want to go. And I think now the team is ready to execute. And in this business, I think investors need to look for companies that have the ability to execute and a proven track record of execution. So we're priding ourselves on our ability to execute and focus on execution while at the same time building a platform for growth in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's borne out by the chart. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that. So great. Thanks. All right, Barry, that's great. We'll leave it there. We'll come back to you again soon. Thank you very much for the update. Thanks, James. Appreciate being here. Thank you. What do you think of that, Bebo? Did you like it? Well, to be honest with you. What well, do you like the new name? I was preoccupied. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Ed, you aren't watching our own show. Well. All right, let's go say hello like to the, the people. I like the name. I like the name. Let's go quickly say to hold who, who has joined us on Facebook, Soze Brooks, hello Soze, Kenneth Somers, hello Kenneth, Mike J. Bling, Stefan Sirks, Erickson, and four people joined, wow, four, Bling? five people joined at once. That gentleman gets Doc Chandler, wow, look at the people just piling on here. Hey, everybody, how's it going? Matthew Weber, Peter Cunningham, not honest Panama Pete Cunningham, all the way from Panama? No, no, no. no. London, England. No, he's from London, England. Uh, tea. Pity. What, what kind of tea? Pity, what? Let's have a tea. Yes. Hey. I decided I'd take my family and move them all uh, over to London, England, because uh, the weather in Panama uh, wasn't quite agreed with uh, me. Uh, maybe, 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 maybe too hot. I, I think it's time for a high tea. Yes, 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 yes. For a glad of scotch. All right. Hello to everybody over there. That's enough Peter abuse. Yeah. Let's see. Who's over on? YouTube, look at our YouTube audience, 46 to 12 on Facebook. Well, Facebook's, you know. I guess that makes us YouTubers. Can I say something about Facebook? You can say anything you like about They've Facebook. They've got themselves in a bit of, uh, we should be watching Facebook for stock because it's a, it's a good one to talk about because it's the most widely held institutional stock in the United States, apparently. No. That's what I've read. What's the symbol, Ed? Uh, let's see, Facebook. Try FB. <laughs> Come on. Say it is it so. that easy? Is that how easy it's going to no. be? Is it Maybe be we like should that have today? a contest and let me answer some questions. Okay. FB. Put up FB. It's on the US. Um, let's see. How do I do that again? Let's see here. Oh, there we are on our show. Look, there we are on our tea and scones. Modern Picasso. What? Tea and scones. Oh, because of Britain. Right. Tea and scones. Do you think? You know what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? I'm thinking that... Uh, what was the symbol I was looking for? F-B. F-B. Okay. 
Facebook, USA, here it is. Oh, tell, tell me. I'm serious. Did I nail it? 185.97, up 1.17% on 19 million now shares take, take, traded. Take a look at the mar uh, market cap on that little, little filly. That little filly? See, this is the thing, though. The United States has like this issue with oh, I know. an inflated I know. currency. I know. But, and, but. And artificial pricing all over the show. No, well, there's it's a question about secu security or they're giving information and oh yeah get, well they're you know. uh, basically aiding and abetting the Russians look at this look at this market cap just half a bill half a bill I think that's 536 billion oh half a trill <laughs> <laughs> holy smokes I feel like Austin Power saying we're and gonna try and extort one million dollars from him and everybody starts laughing <laughs> no one hundred billion dollars. You're not laughing. <laughs> okay, half a bill, half a trill. Half a trillion dollars. Are you one of those people who's impressed by a big number? Or a big member? Or big what? A big member. Like a big Polsky or Gorky? <laughs> well, soft. <laughs> no, not soft. Hard. Hard. Jesus. Whoa! How does Jesus. that happen? Jesus. Is this so, though? so uh, look yeah, at the, look at the lawsuits now, here, though. Look at oh, these I, lawsuits oh, piling Jesus, in on against on, Facebook. Come on, guys. Class action, class action, shareholder alert, class action. I like I mean, it's like a cloud of locusts rises up out of corporate America and descends well, on wait these a, companies. Wait a, wait a, okay, what? Cloud of locusts called like how? So you... so okay, just so we know here. Look at we were here two hundred and change. And that number, I believe, up there was, was about uh, 161. We were at a high of... Keep uh, going. Keep going. Well, no, I'm on the number right no, now. No, you're not. not. No. 218.62. 218. 218. Okay. 218. And today? 184.75. Okay. Okay. So 218. Well, what's the low here? What's the low here? The low is... There it is. 179. 173. No. No. Oh. There, oh, there it was. One, 166, oh. I saw 166. 166.56. Okay. So 218, 156, 66. So 34 and 18 is 52. 52 on, yeah, we're talking about 30%. Yeah, but back up 30%. the decimals there. A dollar eighty or two dollars and twelve cents versus a, to a dollar sixty six is not a huge like that's 30%. not catastrophic. Yeah, but 30%. Well, they say huh. they say on the CNBC show that a drop of 20% from the high puts it in bear market territory. Who's they? CNBC. CNBC. CNBC technical. What do they know? I'm not saying they're right. <laughs> you say it's no big deal, they say they don't know nothing then. You think they're smarter than but us? But you know, you know what quite often happens when you have this kind of gap? There's a, that's your gap. Yeah. Okay, us golfers what might, might use it. For instance, we might use a gap wedge. You don't think about golf, so we won't go there. I know it's got a okay, bunch so of holes. Okay, so lots, lots of times, bunch of holes in a lot around. of cases, half of the gap gets filled. Uh -huh. Half the gap. Yeah. And if a gap remains and this thing rolls over again and breaches that number, whew, look Katie at the volume that day. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, if this is Katie the widest Bar held yeah. institutional stock in the world, uh, that's what it's. That's I've read that. Then, uh, like, how can it? I mean, I, I would think that. But is 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 there an alternative to? Is Facebook got a lock? Well, what 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 is the what is the hit of the regulatory scrutiny I know, I, on the balance sheet? That's what the market is asking us right there, or telling us they're expecting a major hit to Facebook's, you know, ability to do business based on the fact that they're going to have their hands tied behind their back by their European and, Union, and which currently accounts for it's going to cost billions. Yeah, and, and you know, there's, so there's there's a, look, but it's. It, it it makes sense. It got so deeply oversold so quickly. We're getting that bounce back. But I got a I got a funny feeling that uh, it's market close, Ed. I got to take one look at. Oh, up three cents on the day. Is so the let's say you have a half a million shares. That's fifteen thousand bucks from yesterday. Not bad. If you had half a million shares, that would be up fifteen grand. That's what I said. Was there a neck on here? <laughs> was, it took me a while for my mathematical slowpoke yeah, mind you, to you, keep you up can, with that. You can certainly do the milligrams and milliliters and all that stuff very quickly. I don't even know what you're talking about. You said you got this, you got this. and But, I, but when it comes to this stuff, I got this. Yeah, okay. So you're the math gay. 
guy. I, I, Ruth, Ruth. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. Freudian slip there. Is that where those shoes came what, from? What kind of, what kind of what? Backstage play. No, that's not it. Uh, here it is. Now this is, uh, so I want to talk to you about this new company that uh, I'm going to actually participate in their private placement. And the company is called Backstage Play. This is their website. And are, we, are we having somebody talk on here in the next? Yeah, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, so this is um, James, uh, James Maslow is one of the, their guys. He's one of their artists, up and comer. He's got millions and millions. Look at that, 101,000 views on his little Instagram post. I think we'll follow him. There we go. So what kind of game are we talking about from uh, I James? I don't know exactly, but it's some interactive game where you sort of have an interaction with characters could representative like, of the could artist. Could it be like Scrabble? No. No, it's not like Scrabble, but uh, oh boy, what a great, uh, what okay. a great story though. So you, you like it. So Scott White is the gentleman who we uh, interviewed today. And, and, and uh, where is Scott? Is Scott from California? Uh, Scott is from, I don't know where he's from actually, I don't wanna say. But uh, let's see here, I'm trying to get to the BP. Backstage play is the symbol. And this BP. is a company we're gonna get busy on here starting next week. A steal at 21 cents. This stock, Ed, this stock here, tightly held. Some of the guys that are in this deal are some pretty heavy hands, market veterans. I believe this stock will be... Now, uh, tell, tell me about uh, the treasury. Are they, how's their situation? Are they... Well, let's take a look. They just graduated to the oh, TSXV. Back, now it's just non-brokered unit private placement. Okay, let's let's hit that. We're on. doing a private placement now. Oh, that was March. It's going to be that at thirty-five March. cents. This is uh, at seventy-five cents. Scott Scott White's got a Toronto number. Yeah, look at that. Okay, he might he might just be from Toronto, but anyways, so I had a chat with Scott White, and here he is right now. Okay, let's listen. Letter Live. My guest in this segment is Scott White. He's the CEO of Backstage Play Inc. Trading on the TSX Venture under the symbol BP. Scott, welcome. Thank you. Scott, Backstage uh, Play is a sort of a gamification for celebrities that gives them the ability to connect with and interact with their audience at a much higher rate. What exactly does Backstage Play do? So we build and operate technology um, primarily focused on gamification where we provide a network so that a fan and an artist can connect together. And essentially, a fan plays games, they get on leaderboards, they get to the top of the leaderboard, and the objective is to win life-changing prizes that money can't buy. Right, like backstage pass. Like backstage passes. And that's where this backstage Absolutely. play comes from. It just dawned on me. Uh, nothing slow about me here today. So um, for what kind of celebrities are you targeting specifically? Initially the, the, the platform is geared towards the music industry. So we're looking at small, medium and large size music artists, heroes, others, um, you know, that have a, an attractive fan base, mm -hmm. significant fan base. Um, and, you know, essentially in, in the process of of trying to convert those fans into a membership, mm -hmm. um, top up, and um, provide a revenue share with the artist. So at the end of the day, this is a way for the artists to attract a bigger fan base, engage them with their their game, and then get them to the concerts. Yeah, I mean, they're, the, the music industry is having difficulties these days, mm. and you know, when, when an artist is down and they're not touring, the, the cash flow and the generation of revenue is slower. Mm -hmm. So we're providing a brand new revenue channel for each artist and in fact the music industry. Okay, and so what does the revenue model look like? So it's a 50-50 revenue share um, with the artist after backstage plays costs. Um, typically, you know, we expect that a fan will spend uh, $4.99 per month or approximately $4.99 per month and we'll get them to top up um, throughout the course of a year with another fifty dollars. Hmm. Okay, so that's uh, that's not too onerous for the fans, nope. and it's uh, significant for the artist. Absolutely. Over time. Great. So you've got uh, currently, um, you've just started this. We have just rolled it out, and so you've already got two artists that are 
taking advantage of this platform. Yes. Daughtry and James Maslow. Correct. Now, James Maslow has uh, 2.4 million or 3, 3 million followers on Twitter, 1.8 million followers on Instagram, 536,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's pretty significant. So It's decent. They would be uh, considered a small, a small artist. Is that right, eh? And so, so James Maslow is in the early part of his career where he's growing his fan base. And so for him, this is a no-brainer, I'm assuming. Again, it's a revenue stream that doesn't exist for the artist. Right. And how much does it cost you to build and man maintain this platform? So to turn around an artist, white label, for example. So it's one technology platform with multiple white labels on top. And each artist would represent a, a white label. Mm -hmm. If they want a, a website connected and they don't have a website, which would be unusual, um, you know, it's, it, it's a couple of man days of development. If we are, are not building a website and we're integrating right into their social media platforms, it's, it, it's less than that. So it's, it's not significant for, for Backstage Play to, to launch an artist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, I mean, what artist wouldn't want to do this? Um, well, we're about to find out. So, you know, we have, we, we've just really uh, been testing this thing for uh, the past several months. We have two clients that are live today. We have uh, a, a number in the pipeline, mm -hmm. and uh, we are accelerating uh, those potential groups in the pipeline because we have finders that are out there in Los Angeles that are agents and, and, and representatives of the music industry. Mm -hmm. So this is solving a pretty major problem for artists, which is growing their fan base. It, it's quite disruptive. Yeah. The uh, engine on the backside, though, is not something that you've just developed brand new. It's something that's proven already. Right. So, um, you know, I'm a, an online gaming uh, veteran. I've been in the industry, in that is industry, since it began in 1998. And through another company, we built a technology platform that uh, has processed, you know, billions of dollars in transactions and wagers. And it's that technology platform that we're using at Backstage Play. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So then, uh, what is sort of the volume of artists that you expect to onboard in what time period? Yeah, so we're hoping um, if, if, if we look at three a quarter, and again, it's going to depend on the size of the artist. It's a, uh, a bit of a process to get through the, the development of creative and to get everybody in the band to approve it. But if we, if we put together a three artist launch per quarter, you know, nine to 12 acts per, per year, in our first year, we think that that would be a decent, a decent sized business. Sure. And so what typically or on average would you expect each artist to represent in terms of annual revenue bottom line to the company? Yeah. So that we're just in the process of learning um, what the KPI is going to be at this point. We don't have them yet, but our model uh, is that we will convert approximately 7% of what we would call a hardcore fan, and, and we use the, the YouTube subscriber number as that number into a 4.99, 499 membership per month, and then get them to spend an additional fifty dollars a year. So, with a, an artist that has half a million users, half a million subscribers on YouTube, converting seven percent um, with that fifty dollars spend per year translates into about three hundred and fifty thousand per month. Hmm. Well. So, it's a four million dollar business. Um, you know, for a smaller artist. A much larger artist that would have sort of a 10 million, you know, plus fan following, converting at seven percent with that additional fifty dollars translates into about a six point five million dollar per month business hmm. per year. So it sounds to me like this is essentially for the artist. After you get through the creative process, a plug and play yeah. platform that you don't actually have to develop each time. No, that's right. And it just is reskinning it with a new artist sort of front. Correct. Wow, so that strikes me as extremely, uh, you know, sort of capital efficient yeah, the from an investor perspective. The margins on, on a white label platform, you know, to, to run and operate a platform with five clients, you're probably looking at about three million a year. Hmm. So you can cash flow, you know, with five decent sized clients, cash flow something in the vicinity of 35 million. Hmm. So your margins are, are 90%. Wow, that's the great, the great thing about the social gaming sector is that the, we don't have to acquire the fan, the fan is already there. There really isn't a cost um, in terms of pricing because these are typically virtual prizes that money can't buy, um, like backstage passes. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, the two most expensive parts of the online gaming um, sector don't exist in this model. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, how many artists are there? Like, what's what's the global market for this potentially? Well, you know, literally every artist 
um, that is of decent size will at some point gamify what they do. Mm -hmm. But we also believe that, that the music industry is just the start. Right. Um, you know, we think that there is applicability to any professional, anyone that has a following, any hero. So all the way from you know, WWE uh, to influ internet influencers down to the NFL and uh, any kind of professional sports, e-sports, e etc. Mm -hmm. And how do you uh, how do you attract the the artists? How do you get them to join join you? Yeah, so we have a great board of directors uh, and and team in Los Angeles, primarily um, veterans in the in the music industry that are either currently agents or advisors to the music industry, or their clients, or their lawyers, or or others in the industry. So that's basically the tap for us. I see. In internal trap line. Indeed. That's that's handy. Uh, who else does this in the world? No one does this. Uh, we do have competition in the fan management side of the business. So what that would mean is providing um, you know peer-to-peer -peer, um, opportunities for fans. But no one really is is looking at the the gamification, social gaming aspect of, of that engagement. Mm -hmm. So does this platform allow the the artists? top fans to gravitate towards the sort of the, the ultimate prize, which is backstage access at every show? Yes. In fact, uh, Chris Daughtry is doing that right now. Uh, we have Chris giving away front row and then backstage passes to leaderboard leaders oh. uh, on his tour t today. And leaderboard leaders would then be people who are most often playing the game? Correct. Wow. Sounds like a spectacular model. Where's the downside in all of this? I don't think there's a lot of risk. You know, we, we think that this is the social gaming sector um, is now a four billion dollar sector with games like Candy Crush. It really hasn't been used to zero in on fan engagement, and, mm -hmm. and we think that that there's an opportunity. You know, a fan wants to touch their hero. The hero wants to touch their fan. It's all going to be gamification at some point, and, and we believe that because we're first movers, uh, we have a, a really good stab at creating that market. Hmm. Sounds fascinating, Scott. We're going to leave it there for now. We'll come back to you in a quarter's time and see how you're doing. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Stop creating that market. Hmm. Well, what do you think, Sounds Ed? Fascinating, Scott. Well, I think I think it's going to be. Uh, uh, I think they should make a game for us. Yeah, but I think I think the trick will be to get. Uh, you know, are they going to get, uh, for instance, they're going to get Big Jagger on this? Uh, if we call him up and invite him, I'm sure we will. No, but this backstage play thing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> really? Well, you never know. I mean, you think about it. If you're going to use this as a marketing tool, and the whole music industry surrounds now attracting people to live shows where right, the big money right, is made, right, and right. then uh, then what self-respecting... Uh, Musician, self-respecting or self-deprecating, self-aggrandizing, uh, self-promotional, shamelessly self-promote. Well, if you have to be somewhat narcissistic to be an artist in the first right, place, right? But what uh, what what franchise in a, as a music artist yeah. wouldn't want to use it? Like you're well, basically certainly ones that have are that are, that are still, you know, trying you're basically to basically it. siphoning. You're going to all your fans and you're taking the best ones and giving them front of the line access while attracting new fans that otherwise might not hear about you through because they're gamers. So to me, it's, it's a slam dunk. I want to see how the revenue scales, but he did say the margin is 90% based on the fact that the gaming engine has already been and developed what is and the re And who, who put, who's giving him the money? Who's putting up money? Advertisers? No, the, uh, the fans are. Fans? So, yeah. So the fans have, so a guy fans has... Fans still have money left? Yeah, the fans, the fans are the guys spending the money at the big concerts. The fans are the ones spending, like, for example, 1500 bucks for a Bruno Mars seat at the front of the house. Yeah, but that, those are, those are uh, obviously not impoverished fans. Well, they are after they buy a $1,500 seat. You buy a seat, and now you're impoverished. <laughs> exactly. So you won't be able to play anymore. So, you know, I want to see if they can onboard 12 artists per year, or 12 artists per, or I think he said three per quarter, so call it... 12 per year. Let's say one a month. One a month. Three and per each, quarter. And each one generates, you know, 350,000 sure. bucks a month that they split with the artist. There's a business there. Sure. If the, if the margin is 90%. So that's, that's, the show me, that's the show me part of it. That's the show me part of it. It's like, let's see this thing, make money. Let's see artists gravitate. So you're, you're saying, in a, let me see if I can sum this up. Show me the money. 
show me the money. Show me the money. Let me help you show me the money. Wow. It's that simple. You know, we're, we're at, at, at the end of the day, we are simple. in one of the Tom Cruise's movies. Oh, that is the line from the Tom Cruise oh, movie. I thought maybe I just got lucky again. Oh! What is that? It's squirrel? Oh, duck, duck! <laughs> duck, duck! Rabbit! Uh, oh, boy. Okay. Oh, great. Well, what do you think? Let, let's put up the chart of uh, X-Row. X-Row? X-Row. You want oh, to talk oh, about X-Row again, eh? I just, You're I trying just, to rope them into client mode, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. we're going to have uh, Mark Godsey on the show here. Oh, I yeah? Spoke, When's he coming on? I spoke I spoke to him, but... XRO is the symbol? XRO. XRO. X, yeah, XRO. X-Row Technolo Technologies. Yeah. Now, can you get this on the big screen? Yeah. Ah! Jesus. <laughs> is he eating that paper? Yeah. Now, look at that. Look at that I'm little... going to go full screen on you here. Whoa! Look at this little move up here. Now, we're Yeah, you know up. what? This is when we started talking about it back here. Yeah. And this is when yep. we're, we're still talking about it. Still talking about it. Every you time know, you, you know open what? your you mouth... Old... This has got, apparently... This has got uh, the, the, what they call... 100 could, bagger potential? It, 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 this, and would you consider that a forward-looking statement under the context of the Ontario Securities Commission? Huh? <laughs> James, I, I think, own this stock, and I think it's going to 100 bucks because I own it. No. <laughs> I think it has something to do with... with uh, it has something to do with uh, applications for electric motors and energy conversion and making battery charging more of it. It's, it's the, the whole, uh, <laughs> if, you, if you had a game changer. <coughs> You're flummoxed. I, I'm flummoxed that I just put money in it to 25 cents and it's closed at 37. Really? You put money in at 25? Yeah. Well, that's a smart trade. Well, I point. don't know. I mean, look, they, 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 I'm hearing. It's been as high as, uh, let's see, what was the high here? Been as high as 68. Trades uh, pretty lightly on yeah, average. No, yeah, yeah. Some there's, big days in there. There's a lot of stocks tied up, it looks like. Like a lot of pretty strong holders. But I mean, look at here. It ran up and it looked like it was going to go and it didn't. Okay, big tail. No, big, no, big wick. Big wick. Big what? Big tail, big wick. <laughs> Ooh. Right. Anyway, I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm do, d sure. I. <laughs> I put money into it. Must, I must like it, or I'm hopeful. I want to like it. Yeah, I might buy a little of that. What's the uh, what's outstanding on that? Let's take a look at the. I uh, think, uh, let's go away from the full screen. Let's go to the fundamentals here. Forty-six point two million shares. Forty-six point two. Now it's I don't know bad. if that includes. Includes what's it includes? It includes. If that includes the the deal they just did because they just raised. They wanted to raise a million and a half. They got two point. Three million oversubscribed, yeah, for one point eight million. And then they did a second tranche here. Okay, of, of, let's take a look at this press release. Two point one million. Okay, Mark Godsey. So that's the guy you're going to get. Mark Godsey. I spoke to him at length, and he's a he's a real. Uh, I think he's a, prof a lawyer by by profession. Yeah, from a, from a much uh, uh, a distant previous life, not mm -hmm. a recent lawyer, but he's got. A, he's a, you know he's obviously. Uh, Professionally uh, educated. Nice. Okay, here. here just read. I just want to read this. Now, this is increased focus on torque speed management for electric motors. I, I'm not sure what that means, but I think it, there are a lot of people are interested in this. Well, let's take a look at how it describes. The data shows that XRO's coil switching technology improves torque at low speeds and allows electric motors to maintain higher torque at lower speeds. Okay, so it's all about fuel efficiency at the end of the day. Well, except that we're talking electric. So fuel, when you say fuel... Well, the fuel of an uh, electric battery. thing is either a battery or yeah. a power source. The, the, yeah, fuel yeah. efficiency is important in energy transmission, no matter what the application. I like, I like this, this guy's name, Torsten Breuer. Breuer? Sounds like a bro. Bro. Hey, hey, bro? bro. hey, Yo, bro. Hey, bro. Yo, bro. What's up with the motor, What's going yo? on? How's the motor? Yeah. Keep your motor running. Get on, on the highway. Jeez, Jeez. Jesus. It's only Wednesday today. Hey, and we aren't even on we soft. Lithium works. That's a big company, apparently. Oh yeah? 
lithium works. So you got excited you know, when you, you know saw what? that. Let's well, take a look at that press release. Survey says. Survey says. Extro Technologies has a uh, company, Extro Technologies and Battery Portable Power Solutions Group, Lithium Works, have agreed to collaborate to improve the way batteries are controlled under variable conditions. Hmm, that's getting right up there into tech speak. You know what? I think this is, this is one of these things that could be very big. Okay. And it could also, you know, like, let's, I'm not suggesting that that's definitely going to happen, but. Uh, look well, at, it's got a Patreon. hell of a good looking chart and that thing is in accumulation phase and it's starting to get higher volumes. So, uh, it's, this is Patriot. Oh, Patriot. <laughs> hey, hey, Wait, where you know did XRO you know go? Why don't we just put up a chart that looks good <laughs> and then we'll just whatever what name you want uh, to put and say, well, uh, here, let's put, that's what I do. Put some letters, right? I put up stocks that I own. Ah. So let's see. There's extra. Yeah, that's, so that's a nice looking chart. We, we need chart. to get it through. If it gets through 40 cents on a bit of volume, then we then, well, then but look at this thing. It climbs on no volume, yeah, which implies that it, it is tight. being held tight. Yeah, that all the insiders who hold it are believers. So 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 can I throw out some numbers here? Sure, if, throw them out. Like for instance, I, I said to this fellow, I said, "You think you got something here that can, you know, I, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't say this because it just sounds like I'm, I'm being I'm t self touting." Yeah. Don't want to do that. Blowing your, talking your book? Talking. Blowing smoke out your, no. My derriere. <laughs> toot, toot. <laughs> your pickle hole. <laughs> what was the thing that Tom Obradovich said about the pickle? He said, oh, he I said, can't how remember. do you, how do you, something about it. I think he used the, the D, the double D uh, word. Uh, I don't even want to know what that is. You know what you don't talk about. No, I have no idea why. No. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe if we have, let 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 let's let's have uh, let's have uh, Plato. Let's ask Plato. Plato's not here today. Plato's what? Plato's gone on vacation. You didn't know? Where did he go? Uh, Greece. Back to the homeland for a visit. Greasy. <laughs> yeah. He's greasy. Greece. What, what stock is this? This is GT. We already talked oh, about that. Oh my God! Like, and, and so look, wow in the hell? The, 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 so so here, viewers. This stock had a bad day, down 16 cents, right? 20%. What? No. That's Patriot. Patriot One has a good day. It's a good day. Up five cents. I'm not talking about on Patriot. I'm 1.36 million. No, that's a good day. You want me chart. to stand up or sit down? <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. YouTube wants Radiant Technologies. Radiant Technologies. What's the symbol for Radiant? Yeah. RTI. RTI? Let's take a look. It is Radiant Technology. Okay, RTI okay, is correct. Let's watch it. Let's let's put a. Here comes a chart. Survey says. Survey. Oh. Drifting lower. Yeah. Not emulating not a good the path chart. of its uh, of its uh, mate Aurora. All right. Well. But but but, but what? Going down. What business are they in? Radiant Technologies. Ooh, bot deal. Twenty four point eight million on the thirty yeah. first of July. Radiant Technologies makes. Uh, is it? It's, uh, extracts natural compounds from a range of biological materials using microwave assisted processing. A patented technology platform which provides severe customer outcomes in terms of ingredient purity, yield, and cost. So, sounds to me like they make fertilizer. <laughs> but it sounds like it's pretty high tech for Wait a minute, wait a minute. It has something to do with uh, mar marijuana. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's what they do. They make. Uh, patented technology platform. So they're basically trying to increase purity yield and improve costs. Using I can, you this. know what, we should, uh, I, I was going to suggest something, but I'm, I'm not going to because it might offend some people. We don't want to offend any people on the show. Oh, no, Ed, we should offend everybody. No, no, <laughs> say it ain't so. No, that's how we get rid of all these, uh, that's how you lose your audience. But that, we don't want to lose our audience. <laughs> Last time we I just checked, got an audience. Yeah, we want to increase our audience. Yes, we're 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 horribly insensitive. Yeah. Look at this Aurora flying force up four cents. Up what? Did up four cents. You? Yeah. Well, that was an earlier look. Let's see what it closed at. Up two oh, cents. Oh, that that was cutting. Still, half. it's an up day. We'll take that in the Aurora world. Aurora's been getting hammered. But now that could be, maybe, is this, is this the bottom? Is it time to start accumulating Aurora again? 
That's when, where's Plato when you need him? Yeah, I know. Plato's in Greece on Santorini. Yeah, canopy held its its yeah, uh, four price and a half up. percent. That's a nice move. Yeah, yeah, that's a good move. Well, it's. <laughs> I was going to say Boy, it's that time again. The byproducts of cannabis use rear their ugly heads once again. Um, let's take a look at what haven't we looked at? Do you here? know? Do you know? Uh, there's a gentleman over at uh, at. Uh, <laughs> Don't know his name, and I don't know where he works. This is going to be good. Boy, let's see. Uh, you know, higher than anyway, six Anyway, we feet. were talking about fintech. I just saw fintech up there. And uh, we were talking about fintech, and they're involved in a fintech deal. And it's the company that has the former finance minister of Ontario as the chairman. Uh, it's Gravitas. You know Gravitas. Philip Schum used to... Worked there, I believe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyway, one of the top guys at Gravitas, real nice guy, uh, Vikas. His name oh, yeah, Vikas. yeah, I know Vikas. Yeah. So we were talking, he told me this, this, this fact, this is just a fact I thought was fascinating, that there's over 2 billion people on this planet that don't have the financial capacity to open a bank account. 2 billion? 2 billion. So 40%. What's that like? No, it's about 25% of the world's population. Can't open a bank account. Can't open a bank account. Like, for instance, like people that and we we're talking about, because I think some of their fintech is being deployed in uh, Abu Dhabi. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of uh, people coming in from, say, Africa, like workers to come in, do a bunch of jobs. And, and they, you know, they, this fintech's allowing them to sell, send money to their relatives. Because, hmm. you know, they get a card. Card, yeah, yeah. You, you know, you know more about it than I do. I can assure you, because I know nothing well, about it. Um, but, but I'm saying, remittances. You think the remittance that, business, that's called. It's the re remittances. You just sum it up, don't you? You just well, I mean, know I the just, one or two. I know because they using uh, those buzzwords, uh, trying to make me feel <laughs> stupid. No. Why do you do that? A, I just, I just lost my shirt on a crypto deal that lost its banking arrangements. So it lost its banking relationships in Canada, yeah. its banking relationships in Panama, and it was going into the remittance business using crypto. And it got sidelined don't, by this. Don't CPTO. Don't CPTO? What the hell does that mean? Well, well, there was one deal that Dana, our friend Dana was talking about, and, and uh, it was around $1.50. Now I, I, it's halted. I don't know if it's ever coming back. Oh, yeah? <laughs> casualty? Another casualty. casualty. Yeah, no, this one was going into a shell. I bought 20% uh, of the shell. And the you still deal own blew up. You still own it? Yeah. But so can we put it something else into it? Well, we can, but the, uh, the crypto company in Panama consumed all the capital that we'd raised in the shell. Yeah. And so we're going to have to roll it back and, and start again. However, I am going down to California to look for some uh, cannabis companies that want to go public here pretty quick. I'm going to go down and see our West Coast correspondent, Justin Marshall, who we didn't get to today. Justin, if you're watching, we didn't get to you today because you sent us so much content that the editor is going, ah, I can't get this done today. Okay. So we'll probably see that footage tomorrow. Uh, what else we got going on here? Let's see. Who else is coming tomorrow? We got Clint Sharples coming in tomorrow, who is the CEO of, uh, of uh, Heritage Cannabis. Heritage Cannabis just announced a takeover of a private company called Canicure that I have been uh, an investor in from day one. I've got like 700,000 shares or something. And... Uh, Jeez, these are monster positions, James. Monster positions. Uh, well, it depends. It's all relative, I suppose. Yeah, if you get in a tenth of a cent. <laughs> then theoretically, theoretically, I'll have to put... Yeah, I don't know. But, if uh, a stock goes, starts off, you get it in a tenth of a cent, it goes to two cents. What kind of bagger would it be? 20 bagger. 20 it's times one tenth of a cent? Tenth of a cent times 20 is two cents. That's a good point. So that's, that's all. Would that be 200% or 2,000% increase? 2,000. <laughs> hey. Nothing slow about you. I was born at night, but not last night. Oh, he drags out the old cliche tired joke that the last time I heard I fell right off my dinosaur. Oh, okay. Not as bad. And you know what time it is? I, th I know what time it is. What time is it? It's time to say good night. No, it's time for a beer. This night's just getting started. Good night. It's no, I meant 4.30 good night in the to afternoon. The viewers. 
What do you mean good night? Where are you talking to people in Europe? It's 4.30 on the East Coast. It's even earlier on okay. the West Coast. Okay. You think we got people watching in China, Japan? Come on. Are we going for a beer or are we going for a beer? Have you done any cannabinoids today? Nothing. 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 You got nothing. I got nothing. I did 33 milligrams of CBD right under the tongue last night. And I'll tell you, I was giggling like a schoolgirl. I always thought it was the THC part of it that made you giggle like a schoolgirl. No, Turns out no, it's not. No, it, it gives you there's a nice... Numbness. Yeah, no, I'll tell you what, I am a big CBD fan. Less yeah. THC now. You know, when I was a kid, THC was because you wanted yeah. to get high. Let's, you possible. know what? Why don't I, on one show, let's do this. You take the CBD and I'll take the THC. That sounds good. Or no. no. I'll, you mean I'll, I'll talk and you won't? No, 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 we'll do it this way. We'll do it this Whoa. way. We'll take one and we won't tell the, the audience which one we took. And they'll try to determine. We'll have a little contest. Well, that'll be easy. No, it won't be easy. You don't think because so? Because we'll do everything we can to fool them. Oh, so I'll pretend that I'm like, what? What would you say, Ed? What? You sound just like uh, the, the Tom Hanks in that movie. Uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, you know. the. the <laughs> no, I don't not, know. Not Gomer Pyle, but. Tom Hanks movie. Okay, which Tom of the Hanks 30 movie. Tom Hanks movies? And he, and he, went he, down he, for remember me. He, 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 his friend lost his, Gary Sinise was in the, in the thing where he lost his legs and they had a shrimp boat. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, Gump. That's yeah. A, you, that's who you're talking like. You're talking like Forrest Gump. Uh, life is like a box of chocolates. <laughs> like the. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I don't want to talk like Forrest all Gump. I, all I have to say about Anyways, that. Anyways, I okay. want to say goodbye to our friends on, uh, wait, on our front page of our website, if you tune in to MidasLetter.com, there we are, front page of our website. Tom Williams, is that our Tom Williams editor, Tom Williams? Hey Tom, how are you doing? Sorry, you have nothing better to do than to watch us on a Wednesday afternoon. Jeez. What's wrong with you? You know what? I'm a pro Thanks, Tom. I, the only I one. Forrest it. Gump. Yes. Waiting and Wee. Classic headbutt on the mic. You saw that, did you? <sighs> Good you, thing. See, did I, you head, head Yeah, yourself? I just was laughing. When? I went, boosh. Wait, just now? Yeah, I was laughing at you. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you laugh at, at me. At my friend Harry Leishman's uh, wedding? These, oh, no, are, my, these wedding. are my friends, and my friend, I said, he starts yeah, laughing well. at me, you headbutt him. You know what you can do with this now, don't you? Put at my the, friend put Harry Leishman's sun, stag, you? I was laughing so hard I went like that, except it was a glass of wine, and I cut this big smile in the top of my head oh, with a glass of wine that clever, was bleeding clever. like crazy, and everybody's like, oh my god! But anyways, it was no big deal. Modern Picasso, check out Telcoin. They're involved in the remittance game through Telcom carriers internationally. Let's make a note of that one. I want to hey, write that one down. Did you Telcom. ask to see if you could borrow my pen? No, I didn't. This is my pen. No, it's not. Des possession is nine-tenths of the okay, law. Therefore, pen. ergo, it's my pen. Tom Williams, beer, John and Sons, 15 minutes. Uh, John McKiosi, RTI is one of Aurora's strategic investments. They produce the highest quality, great extracts, the most costly, right. time and efficient way possible. No solvent use. I'm surprised you aren't interested. John, I would not say we're not interested. I would say that we are ignorant, ignorant. of the facts. Yeah, we're and we haven't really. Yeah, and, uh, I, and I, yeah, again, yeah, I. I who listen, can keep up with all Aurora's acquisitions? I've been in the business be 40, like 40 plus years, and you know what? Every day I hear of uh, five companies that I've never heard of before. You know what we're going to do, John Mac Macchiosi? I don't know how to say your name. I apologize if I'm butchering it. We're going to call uh, Radiant Technologies and ask them if the CEO would like to come in and do an you interview. You know what? That's a great idea. I think that's an excellent yeah. idea. Yeah, but, like you know, judging by the name, I would have never thought that there was an association with Aurora? With, 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 uh, with the cannabis industry. Radiant Technologies. It, yeah, that's well, that's well, a I good don't know. point. I, you know, I'm not saying... That's a good point. I don't think their technology is only applicable to right, right. cannabis. I'm I looking for a clue here. Like, yeah. I'd like to see maybe some kind we'll, of idea. We'll get them in here. We'll get them in here. We'll find out. Look, we'll you know, I don't know. Down. I've invested in this company, x -Row. I don't know what x -Row stands for. E-X-R-O. What, what the, could that mean? How did they come up with that? E-X-R-O? Well, we're going to ask that CEO, too. We're going to talk to Mark Godsey. Mark Godsey. Uh, all right. Well, that's it for our little show today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Please feel free to subscribe and hit the alert button and sign up for the newsletter and send money and join us for a beer at John and Sons in 15 minutes if you're in the neighborhood. Just happy to buy a beer for our friends. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a sign there on the block on the chalkboard that says free.